Hello everyone. Today we'll be discussing the particulate nature of matter. There are two types of changes in nature. And these two types of changes are very important in chemistry. Physical change and chemical change. When changes occur and there is no formation of a new substance, such change is said to be physical. Therefore, in physical change there is no formation of new substance. Any change that occurs and yield a new substance or product is called chemical change. Thus, in chemical change, there is formation of a new substance. Physical changes require little or no heat to proceed. But in the case of chemical change, a tangible amount of heat is required. Physical change can easily be reversed. Since there is no formation of a new substance, this is easily reversible. While chemical change are not easy to reverse. Example of physical change is the melting of ice. Solid ice when heated will melt to liquid. An example of chemical change is the rusting of iron. The best way to differentiate a physical change from a chemical change is to see if this reaction is reversible or not. This means if it is easy to get back the starting material, then you can categorize such as physical change. What is a matter? Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Matter can be in form of a solid, liquid, or gas. These three are called states. of matter. The law of conservation of matter states that matter can neither be created nor destroyed but can be converted from one form to another. Basically, there are terms for each phase of change of state of matter. They are defined as follows. Melting is the process of converting solid to liquid state. A solid matter when converted to liquid is said to have undergone melting. The reverse of melting is freezing. Freezing is the transformation of liquid to solid. This is normally achieved through cooling, while melting is normally achieved through heating. 
When liquid is heated to a certain temperature, it tends to evaporate into gas. This process is called evaporation. Cooling this gas will take us back to liquid and this is called condensation. There are special substances that skip the liquid phase and convert from solid to gas. This process is called sublimation and such substances are said to have sublime. Notable example of substances that sublime are iodine, methanol, camphor, ammonium chloride, etc. Let's further study matters in form of elements, compound, and mixtures. An element is a substance that cannot be broken into simpler unit by an ordinary chemical process. There are 118 known elements. Examples are calcium, hydrogen, nitrogen, copper, mercury, argon, potassium, etc. The 118 known elements are arranged in a table according to atomic numbers called the periodic table. When one or more of these elements combine chemically to form a compound, to form a product, such product is called compound. Thus, a compound is a substance that contains two or more elements chemically combined together. The elements that make up a compound are called the constituent of that compound. Example, water. Water contains two hydrogen and one oxygen. Recall, the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 and that of oxygen is 16. Therefore, the percentage by mass of hydrogen in water will be 2 times 1 divided by 16 plus 2 times 100. 2 divided by 18 times 100. This gives 11.1%. The percentage by mass of oxygen can be calculated using the same method or simply by subtracting 11.1 from 100%. Remember, a compound has its constituent chemically combined. A mixture is a substance that contains two or more constituents that are easily separated by physical method. This means that the constituents of a mixture are physically combined. Example of a mixture is air, which contains oxygen, carbon four oxide, nitrogen, rare gases, dust, and moisture. Another example of a mixture is petroleum. Petroleum contains petrol, kerosene, petroleum gas, bitumen, etc. This can be separated by a method called fractional distillation, pure and impure substances. In chemistry, 
A substance is said to be pure if it contains only one substance with no other substance mixed to it. For instance, H2O is said to be water. The presence of any other compound aside hydrogen and oxygen in the ratio 2 to 1 makes this water impure. An impure substance may be mixture of elements, mixture of compounds, or mixture of elements and compounds. That is, elements, element, impurities, element, compound, impurities, or compound, compound, impurities. Melting and boiling points are the most effective properties for determining purity of a substance. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade. The presence of impurity will alter this figure. The presence of impurity increases the boiling point of liquids and decreases the melting point of solid. As such, melting and boiling points are the most effective ways of determining if a substance is pure or not. Summarily, we stated that there are physical and chemical changes. Physical change involves the formation of no new substance and little or no heat is required. Chemical change involves the formation of a new substance accompanied by a tangible amount of heat. Physical change are easily reversible while chemical changes are not. We also stated that matter is any substance that has mass and occupies space. And we said the three states of matter are solid, liquids, and gases. We further said that the change of states of matter occur via different processes. Solid melts to liquid. Liquid freezes to solid. Liquid evaporates to gases and gases condense to liquid. A special phenomenon whereby a solid converts directly to gas is called sublimation. Remember, elements are the smallest unit of a substance that cannot be easily splitted. And we said there are 118 known elements. This element, when combined chemically in simple ratio, form compounds. While mixtures are a collection of substances that can be separated by physical means. Also, melting points and boiling points